Hey everyone, welcome back to the Goff House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny, and today we're making freezer meals. These are gonna be crock pot specific freezer meals. So we are gonna chop and drop in a bag, seal them up, write the directions, what we're gonna add to it once we put it in the crock pot. These will be quick meals and they are lifesavers and I love a good crock pot meal. Let's get started. First thing I've done is label my bag and then put the instructions on it also. And then I've got my spices I'm gonna use. I have my beef, I have honey, we're gonna use an onion, a green pepper. If you like red bell pepper, onion, or sorry, if you like red bell pepper or orange bell pepper, any color you want, um, one to two peppers, depends on how many peppers you like in your fajitas. And then I've got apple cider vinegar and we're gonna use some garlic. So we're gonna get this in a bag. First thing I'm gonna do is um, cut my beef. Now I've got a roast here. You can buy um, stew meat and use that if you prefer. It's really expensive and then you don't get the strips. I'm gonna cut this in strips against the grain. Um, so I'm gonna do that first. Okay, I am only doing one bag of fajitas today. Um, if you wanna do multiple bags, this everything I put in this one bag is going to be per bag. Um, this roast is, how many pounds? So this is a three pound roast. So I'm probably going to use, well I'm gonna use about two pounds of it. So I will take this off. Look at where my grain is going and then I'm gonna cut against the grain and I'm actually gonna cut it this way also. Okay. And this cut I'm using is um, bottom round. You can cut your strips as thick as you like them. Make sure your roast is a little bit frozen when you cut them. It's a little bit easier. This really this started thawing out on me. Now there are just three of us in our households, so doing th freezer meals, I'll pick a couple different dishes for beef, and we're gonna do two for beef, and then we're gonna do um, two for chicken, and then I have, I think, one, two for sausage. I gotta look at my list, because I can't remember. So that's how I do it, and I do one of each. Now, if there's something that you really specifically like, you can make much more of that freezer meal. Okay, we're gonna put our fajita meat. Now, I left this a little bit bigger. You can cut it smaller if you prefer. I'm gonna get to work on um, doing my pepper, slicing my pepper, my onion, and my garlic. And I'll be back when this is sliced up. Okay, my vegetables are done. Um, I just cut my peppers into strips, and green pepper is all I have today. If I had a red pepper, that would go in, but you know, I'm not gonna make any special store runs. Um, when I pull this out of the freezer, if I have an extra pepper at the time, I'll chuck it in. And then my onion, I just kinda sliced uh, vertically. So I'm gonna put that in. We like a little more onion than pepper. <laughs> As you can see. Of course, I fear you already know that about me. I'm gonna crush in three garlic cloves here. So I have a couple, a couple little ones. Those crushed in. Okay. I'm gonna put in here about a teaspoon of onion powder. Even though I've got onions in there, onion powder lends a different flavor. Um, I've got a Himalayan pink salt. I'm probably going to put in a half a teaspoon there. 
I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon of cumin in here. You know, if you need to measure, you can measure. This is kinda straightforward. I'm gonna put a whole teaspoon of paprika. I'm gonna put in a teaspoon and a half. I'm gonna do a teaspoon and a half of chili powder. And then I'm gonna throw in a teaspoon of Mexican oregano. Because it's pretty much my favorite herb. <laughs> I'm also going to put in here a good two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Just a tablespoon of honey. Wow, if you can get it out. Okay. Yes, my honey's crystallizing. <laughs> and then I'm going to put in a teaspoon of black pepper. Okay. This is it for this freezer meal. You can mix it around if you want, but it's all going to go into the crock pot. So, And honestly, when I freeze them, I freeze them like this. I gotta make sure all the air is out though. I don't freeze them flat. I freeze them like this. They fit in the freezer better. And then when I pull it out, I never defrost it. I chuck it right into the crock pot. Okay, I've got my bag labeled and have my instructions on there to add six cups of beef broth or stock and then cook on low eight hours. I'm gonna go ahead and put the beef in here. And this is two pounds of bottom round roast and I've cut it into about one inch cubes. Did I forgot to sit, did I forget? Did I forget to say that we're making uh, beef and barley stew? Okay. Got my stew meat in, we're gonna work on the veg. Three medium carrots, diced. I'm sorry, minor slice. <laughs> but you can dice yours if you want them diced. My carrots are going everywhere. Okay, I have half of a really large onion here. Um, you can use a medium onion. This one just happened to be ginormo. I have three stalks of celery. I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon of salt in there. It's just Himalayan pink salt. I'm gonna put some pepper in there. Probably half a teaspoon. I'm gonna add some dried thyme. Probably a half a teaspoon-ish. And I'm gonna add a bay leaf. Also, I forgot to mention, and I didn't write it on here, and I should have, that's all I'm using for seasoning. So we'll add beef broth when we go to cook it. And if it needs more salt, you know, taste it and add more salt and pepper. Um, but I'm going to put my barley in. I have a box of instant barley that I keep. And I'll just throw it in about halfway through the cooking process. Um, so you might want to make note of that on here. Otherwise, that is ready for the freezer. The next one we're making, Italian subs. In here I have one pound of hot Italian sausage and one pound of sweet Italian sausage and my directions to cook on low eight hours. So with those, I have one large 
green pepper that I have chopped and you can use red bell pepper if you prefer. <laughs> my meat's already frozen and uh, so I can't stand my bag up. <laughs> yes, I know they make those bag holders, um, but you know, it's not like I make a ton of freezer meals all the time anymore. So I probably won't ever buy them. <laughs> I could probably put it in a bowl too, but that's okay. Okay, so there's my green pepper. And then I have a really large onion. I'm gonna put the whole onion in here. I like onion and most of the stuff we eat has a lot of onion in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the whole onion in here. Okay, my whole onion is in here. To this, I am going to add some black pepper. I'm gonna put in about a half a teaspoon. You can put in whatever you like. I have a little Italian seasoning here. I'm probably gonna put in a good teaspoon and a half. And then, one jar of your favorite spaghetti sauce. This is the one I canned last year. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that right in. If you have this canned up always on your shelf and you don't wanna put it in the freezer bag, you don't have to, you could just pour your sauce in um, as you are throwing in your, your packet of meat. But otherwise, everything is in here and it is ready to go. I'll stick this in the freezer. Okay, this next one is sausage tomato and tortellini soup. This one is not my recipe. I found it um, Pinterest, I think. Gosh, a long time ago. And I've been making it ever since. Um, one pound of hot sausage. You can use links and just remove the casings, whatever you got. One jar of pasta sauce. I have that half of a large onion left, so I'm gonna pop that in. And then I have also three carrots that have been sliced, so I'm putting all those in together. Is in. I have one can of cannellini beans that I have drained and rinsed. And then powdered chicken bouillon. I'm going to put in four teaspoons of powdered chicken bouillon. And then I've got baby spinach. I am going to give these a rinse again even though they're washed and ready to eat. I like to rinse them again. So I'm going to give these a rinse and I am going to pull the stems off of them before I put them in there. About three cups worth. Okay, my spinach is in. I also put two large cloves of garlic in here. Um, I am going to, this doesn't, this, the original recipe doesn't call for it, but I'm going to put in um, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. I'm going to add a little bit more pepper because I can't remember if I put it in or not. <laughs> okay. So this is all together. You can put um, cayenne pepper in here if you want, um, red pepper flakes if you like it even more spicy. I already have the spicy sausage. If you don't like spicy, use uh, sweet Italian sausage in here. I've done it both ways. Okay, so that is all my stuff. This will go into the crock pot with four cups of water for about eight hours. 30 minutes before you're gonna serve it, you're gonna pop in a 20 ounce package of tortellini. And these are just three cheese tortellini. Okay, and then when you're ready to serve in 30 minutes, and I've done this both ways. I've served it just like this, and also I've put about a half a cup of heavy cream in it, and it makes it a creamy Italian sausage tomato tortellini soup. Super delicious. Like I said, this is among my favorite pre um, frozen crock pot meal. <laughs> Okay, on to the next. Do 
Next recipe is honey chicken. In my bag, I have honey. About, oh, maybe three quarters of a cup, maybe two thirds of a cup. I am going to add to this three big garlic cloves. I want a couple good tablespoons of ketchup. And I'm going to put about a half a cup of soy sauce in here. We need the salty salt. I'm going to put a little bit of oil in here, about a quarter of a cup. Putting in some black pepper. And I'm going to add a little bit of Himalayan pink salt. And I'm going to stir this up. I want to put it in the bag first so I can stir it up a little bit. If you wanted to make this spicy, you could put in a kick of cayenne, but I'm going to leave it not spicy. Otherwise, my mother-in-law won't eat it. <laughs> she doesn't like the spice. Okay, I have put in here three whole chicken breasts. You are going to want to double all of that stuff if you need more chicken breasts than three. I'm going to kind of stir them around a little bit. Coat my chicken. Okay, the honey chicken, uh, cook on low for six hours. Now, you can shred this when you're done, and you can serve it with rice, or you can serve it with noodles. I like it with rice. So good. But this ready for the freezer. Okay, the last one, you're not gonna believe how easy this one is, and you probably remember, it's actually an old Weight Watchers recipe, but it's so good I'm actually making two because it's tacos, chicken tacos. So I've got a couple chicken breasts in each one of these. I'm just gonna use a, a one packet of taco seasoning mix. Because instead of making one big batch, I'm splitting it into two since there's only a couple of us. So, I'm going to put half of the taco mix in this one. And the other half in this one. One can of corn. One half will go in here. And the other half will go in here. I have one can of black beans I drained and rinsed. One half will go in here. The other half will go in here. If you're going to do a full batch, it'd be like four chicken breasts, one can of corn, one can of beans, one package of taco seasoning, and one jar of salsa. This is the one I just made, the, the 30 jalapeno salsa. So I'm going to put half in there, half in there. That is it. That is all that goes into these chicken tacos, and they are so delicious. So I've already written on these chicken tacos, put the date, and then I put cook on low six hours. After the six hours, you're going to stick two forks in there, and you are going to shred that chicken. And believe it or not, this cooks with enough liquid because of the salsa. And because you have the beans and corn in there. So you won't need to add any more liquid. When my um, boys were in high school, <laughs> this was one of their favorites. And I used to make a huge batch because I had a lot of boys to feed and their friends. Because, you know, we were the house that had all the kids come over here to eat all the time. <laughs> so there you go. Now, serving ideas. The chicken tacos. Um, you can eat it with taco shells if you are low carb. You could put it in a green pepper and stuff a green pepper, make um, stuff a green peppers with it. Um, you could make burritos out of this. Uh, my son Ryan used to love to put this in a baked potato. <laughs> 
so he wouldn't put any butter on it. He'd just make the baked potato and then load it with this stuff. Um, that was one of his favorites. So there's lots of different uses for this. You could eat it with uh, tortilla chips. Um, when you pull it out, you can put cheese on it. You can put um, dice up some fresh onion and put it in there. Um, if you want, I don't even cook this with onion in it because I have the salsa in it. Um, what else? There's, you can put it on nachos. There's so many different uses. If you wanted to make a, a southwestern pasta, you could do that. You could serve this over pasta. Um, some kind of noodles. You could serve this with rice, just Spanish rice, whatever you want. And then the other things we made, the Italian subs, you can serve that sub meat on rolls and you can cover it in mozzarella, provolone cheese, stick it on the broiler. Or if you want to be low carb, you could definitely cut bell peppers in half. If you cut like a green bell pepper in half and serve it in there, oh my gosh, that would be delicious. And then cover it with provolone or Monterey Jack or mozzarella and stick it under the broiler. Um, the honey chicken, you can serve that with rice or you can serve it with pasta, whatever you want. Um, it's so good, you're gonna love that one. And of course the tortellini soup, I've already told you, you can add a little bit of cream to that and make a creamier version. That is my favorite soup, oh my gosh, to put in the crock pot, I love that one. So I can't wait to make that. Um, already my husband says, when are we having our first freezer meal? <laughs> The beef fajitas, of course, you can serve it on tortillas, or you can uh, you can also serve that one on a baked potato. You can put that one on nachos. Um, you could just eat it alongside a rice if you prefer. Anyway, so that was just some ideas of my favorite freezer meals. Those are my six favorite freezer meals, and now we have six, seven meals because I made two of these. We love tacos in this house. What can I say? What's your favorite freezer meal? Okay, so there are six crock pot meals there for you um, with different meats. So giving you a little bit of variety and those are some of my favorites. Especially the tortellini soup. I love that one. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot and I sure do appreciate your support. If you haven't started following me on Instagram yet, you should at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook and you can visit my blog for all of my recipes, including these, at JennyGoff.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.